Our first reading of today is taken from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 18, verses 18 to 20. In these verses, Jeremiah is aware that his adversaries are plotting against him. That his adversaries want to see his downfall. And the reason why they want to see his downfall is because Jeremiah has proclaimed God's word. Because Jeremiah has spoken what the Lord asked him to speak. But Jeremiah has been a prophet true to the Lord's word. However, because the people prefer to live the way they were living, because the people prefer to do what they had been doing all along, they found it difficult to hear the words of Jeremiah and decide to do away with him, decide to plot his downfall. The same point is repeated in the gospel text of today, taken from the gospel of Matthew chapter 20 verses 17 to 23, in which Jesus gives the third passion and resurrection prediction. Like Jeremiah before him, the Lord also went through a similar ordeal. The Lord also was plotted against. Like Jeremiah before him, the religious leaders at the time of Jesus also plotted his downfall because what he said was unpalatable. What he said could not be accepted. They preferred to live a life in which God was seen as tyrant. They preferred to live a life in which God was seen as a despot. They preferred to live a life in which God would reward them if they did good and punish them if they did wrong. And Jesus says, no, our God is not a punisher. Our God is not a tyrant. Our God is not a despot. Our God is a God who loves and wants to draw you back. Our God is a God who wants you to act from your heart and not merely from your body. Our God is a God who wants you to act with no expectation of return. Our God is a God who wants you to be just and who wants you to be meek and who wants you to reach out. That is the kind of God. And the religious leaders, like at the time of Jeremiah, heard this prophecy, heard this proclamation, heard this son of God talking, this language which was unpalatable. And so they closed their ears, they closed their minds, and they closed their hearts, and they plotted his downfall. Jesus, however, unlike Jeremiah, tells the disciples very clearly that even though he will die, he will be raised. He will rise again. The disciples, however, like us, are unable to understand it. And so, the moment Jesus has finished this third passion and resurrection prediction, the mother of the sons of Zebedee comes to him on their behalf to claim places of honor for her sons, one on the right, one on the left. In that, she is selfless. Yes, she doesn't claim a place for herself, but she claims a place for her sons, right and left of God. Jesus asks them if they have really understood his way. And even though they respond verbally that they have, in reality, at that moment, they did not understand. It is true that later, when James was murdered and martyred by Herod in the Acts of the Apostles, he understood. And John, when he possibly wrote his letters and his gospel, possibly understood. But now, even though they say they understood, they did not. However, it is not merely James and John and the mother of the sons of Zebedee, James and John, who are guilty of this attitude. It is the other ten. Because the other ten disciples, when they hear what the mother has asked of Jesus, began to be indignant with the brothers. And the reason why the other ten were indignant is because in their minds and hearts, 
was the same intention to also have places of honor. They did not want their places of honor to be usurped by these two brothers. And Jesus has to remind them once again of the kind of kingdom he has come to proclaim. A kingdom in which authority is shown not by domination, but authority is shown by service. Jesus was true to his word, like Jeremiah was also true to his word, despite his fear. Jeremiah continued to proclaim this Lord, continued to proclaim the word of the Lord, despite the opposition. Jesus proclaimed his word and the word of God, the word of love, despite the opposition. Will you, as a disciple of Jesus, proclaim this word, a word of love, no matter what the opposition might be.